Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Biochemistry SI Program YouTube channel. This is part two of the isoelectric point pictorial video series. Today, we'll be doing the second half of the calculation. Remember, if you're not ready to move on to this part, go back and watch our last video. You must understand how we got here first before you can fully understand the concept of the math. So, we have our remaining PAs, and we generally know where they belong. But did you notice that they correspond with the two positive and negative charges left in the peptide chain? Basically, you want to start and consider that everything would be protonated. What this means is if you start at a fully protonated charge of the molecule, which would be plus two charge, this would be both of the positive charges. Likewise, if it was fully deprotonated, it would be a maximum charge of minus two because of both of the negative charges. You can always think of it like a scale of charge or even a number line, which is actually what I'll draw right now. We will use these values to plug into this scale, but we want to correlate the charges with how acidic or basic the molecule could become in theory. So let's apply this. The very first group that could lose its hydrogen, or the most acidic, is the pKa of lysine's carboxylic acid group. That would go right here at the very left, 2.18. The next most acidic, or the second one to lose its hydrogen, is the carboxylic acid of glutamate, 4.25. So now we're past zero on the number line. This is a charge of zero. So now we're going to be considering basicity in our calculation. The second most basic is the 9.69 on the NH3 of alanine. This leaves us with the final pKa of 10.53 from lysine's NH3 group. Now we're set up to get our final answer. In order to find the isoelectric point, you cancel out the two outermost values. And if you're confused as to why, you need to understand what isoelectric point even means. At its root, it's the pH where the molecule's net charge is zero, or neutral. So, you kind of just want to find the most accurate average of the two charges at the charge of zero, right? Which relates back to the chart. By doing this, you would take the average of 4.25 and 9.69 sum divided by 2. This will leave you with 6.97. And that is exactly how you find the isoelectric point of this molecule. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe so you can catch our other videos throughout the semester. If you have any lasting questions, leave a comment, talk to a Campus Wire tutor, walk-in tutor, or your SI group leader for more information. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.